Good evening, third grade parents, families. Um, welcome to our webinar tonight. My name is Ben Small. I have the distinct privilege of serving as a superintendent in the Central Valley School District. We'd like you to welcome you, like to welcome you to our webinar, discussing and, and explaining how we will and open up um, our schools for our third grade students to in-person learning. Our students, third graders, will begin next week, Thursday, November 12th. They will begin in an AB schedule. So A students who are identified in the A group will attend on November 12th. And those on in group B will attend on Friday, uh, November 13th with all students returning uh, to our schools on November uh, 16th, all of them together. Uh, this is a phased approach that we are using in order to protect the safety and uh, of our families, our students, our staff, and, and our community. We continue to work diligently with um, our partners at the Spokane Regional Health Department um, as we move forward uh, to, for a safe opening to in-person learning. Uh, with me tonight, I would like to introduce some of um, our leaders at the district level. Uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Tim Noonboom, Associate Superintendent of Learning and Teaching. Would like to introduce Mr. Jay Rao, Associate Superintendent of uh, Human Resources and Operations. Uh, Mr. Eric Hoagland, Executive Director of Learning Teaching of Elementary School. And also with us tonight, Mr. Brian Asmus. Brian is the new uh, safety, uh, School Safety and Security Director for the Central Valley School District. With that, I'll turn it over to our principals to introduce themselves. Good evening, third grade families. My name is Nicole Karras. I'm the proud principal at Adams Elementary School. I'm looking very forward, as well as our staff is, to welcome back our third grade Eagles. I'm Lori Johnson, principal at Broadway Elementary School, and we are looking forward to welcoming back our Broadway stars. Hello, I'm Cindy Sothen, principal at Chester, and we can't wait to welcome back more Coyotes. Good evening, third grade parents. I'm Lindsay Kent. I'm proud to be the principal at Greenacres Elementary and our third grade teachers, myself and all of our staff can't wait to have our Roadrunners back in person. Good evening, I'm Jen Teske. I'm the proud principal at Liberty Lake Elementary where we house our third through fifth graders. And this is our first group of learners coming back to us and we are so excited. Good evening, families. My name is Scott Krenzel. I'm the principal at McDonald Elementary School and really looking forward to rounding up some third grade Mustangs to have in-person learning. Good evening, third grade parents. I'm Mandy Rain, the principal at Opportunity Elementary, home of the Pandas. We are super excited to welcome our third graders back. Hi, third grade parents. I'm Sasha DeArmond, the principal of Ponderosa Elementary, and we are so excited to see our third grade Wildcats. Good evening, everybody. I'm Jeff Dufresne. I have the privilege of being the principal at Riverbend Elementary, and we too are highly excited about returning some more otters. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Stan Kep. I'm the principal at South Pines Elementary School. The teachers and the staff and I are very eager to see our third graders back. See you soon. Good evening. I'm Walt Clemens. I'm the principal at Summit School. Everybody at Summit is excited to have our third graders join our K through students back at school. Good evening, third grade families. I'm Travis Howell. I'm the principal at Sunrise Elementary, and we're very excited to be welcoming our third grade superstars back here next week. Hello, third grade families. I'm Melanie Kilgore, the principal at University Elementary. The third grade teachers, staff, and I are looking forward to having some of our big kids back in the building starting this week. We can't wait to see your third graders. And good evening. My name is Michelle Hagee. I'm going to be the moderator tonight for the webinar and help field your questions and answers. And I'll tell you just a little bit about um, how things will work this evening. We will uh, have a presentation and several of the folks on um, the screen here will help walk through an agenda. And uh, once we've gone through our presentation, we'll open it up for Q&A. 
And if you haven't done this before, at the bottom of your screen, there's a little Q&A button. And as folks are presenting, you're welcome to use that Q&A button to ask us a question. And what we'd ask is that you include your school in your questions so that if the answer is specific to your school, that we get you the right information. And you can also include your name and contact information if you'd like us to follow up one-on-one -on -one with you. We can't just see that from the Zoom screen. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Cindy and she'll kick off our presentation this evening. Thank you, Ms. Aggie. Thank you, Superintendent Small. And thank you parents for taking time to with us tonight to help us help you prepare your third grade child to return to in-person learning. We in Central Valley know and appreciate that you uh, know your child best. And as their first teacher, we know that we can count on you for support and extra guidance in helping them get ready to return to in-person learning next week. Your comfort level will help to dictate how comfortable they are. We have a few things that can be worked on at home prior to them attending school on Thursday and Friday. We will be wearing masks at school. And if you can start out by having your child wear a mask for short periods of time throughout the day, they will become more comfortable with this. It has been great to see our kindergartners through our second graders adjust to wearing these in such a short period of time. Students will wear their masks during much of the um, school day while we are in the learning portion of the day, while eating meals and engaging in outdoor, stu outdoor movement, students will not be wearing masks. Second, help your child with good hand washing. Please remind your child to use enough soap and to scrub for at least 20 seconds before rinsing. Typically, we ask littler uh, students to sing the ABCs or the happy birthday song while they're um, doing this activity. Let them know that we will teach to hand washing before they eat, uh, after using the restroom, and then once they come in from outdoor movement. By practicing this now, it will make it easier when they return to school. Each day when your child comes to school, they will bring a completed student symptom attestation checklist ticket. If you picked up materials at your child's school already, you were given a pre-printed tablet with your child's name on it. Each day, we ask that you attest to your child's health prior to coming to school. If your child is symptom-free, then they can enter the building for the day. If the child does not or does show symptoms listed, we ask that you keep them home for the day. Lastly, we will begin taking, we will be taking temperatures um, each morning uh, while before students enter. We use a touchless thermometer to read your child's temperature from about an inch away from their forehead. This may seem awkward at first and a little odd, but in no time, this will be a new habit that students will um, be used to while they arrive to school. If a student begins showing symptoms at school, we will monitor this and keep you informed. Our goal is to keep students safe. We will be in constant communication with you regarding your child. We also inform parents of situations where staff or students are being tested for COVID and the ultimate result of the test. Our rooms go through strict cleaning procedures throughout the day. Your third graders will definitely notice that school is different this year. The thing that is not different is that we have caring teachers and staff who will go above and beyond to help your child feel comfortable and successful at school. Teachers are wonderful at teaching and reteaching when necessary. If you send them prepared with these expectations, they will feel success from the minute they enter the building and will be able to settle in to in-person learning that much quicker. The video that we are going to show next is an example of how the morning attestation um, temperature taking will take place.
We will show you our process for students entering our schools safely. You're helping us be able to have our students learn in person in a safe manner at our schools. We couldn't do all of this without you. Make sure the student has their mask and their attestation ticket before exiting the car. Then they will be ready to move to the coned area to enter the building. Be sure to remind the students to use hand sanitizer before going to class. How are you? With your help, we will move forward safely together. Thank you, Cindy. My name is Brian Asmus. I am the Director of School Safety and Security. Uh, welcome to all, all of our families. Uh, we're excited to have our third graders uh, join for in-person learning. And as we do so, we want to make sure that our students and our staff remain safe. And so I'll let you know that Central Valley School District is committed to that safety. And we work very closely with the Spokane Regional Health District, uh, working with them, following their guidelines as we prepare to have your third graders enter our schools. Um, so a few things to uh, talk about. One is that, so I, as you know, we've had the kindergartners and first graders and second graders this week uh, start in-person learning. And so we have this down pretty well and have a good process in place. And we've had a great success uh, at having our students remain safe. And we're counting on you to, to continue that and working with you to make sure that our students and staff remain safe as they go through this, this process. So how we've prepared for that is not only what you've already heard tonight, but we do have uh, safety protocols that are in place. Uh, we have smaller class sizes to prepare for the social distancing that's necessary to keep us safe. And staff has the personal protective equipment that they need uh, to keep themselves and your students safe as well. So now this part gets uh, maybe a little overwhelming, but please bear with us. Um, it's not as complicated as that, that looks. And uh, what this has to do with is um, if your child experiences a symptom and what those symptoms are and what that means for you and your families. So as you see, there's the class A symptoms and those are um, a fever of 100.4 or higher, a cough, loss of sense of taste and or smell and shortness of breath. If your student has any one of those class A symptoms, we're asking you to keep the child home, notify your school um, that what symptoms that they have and that obviously they will not be attending in-person school. And what that means is that they will receive a letter from the school that talks about what the options are for them to return. The options are the, the, your student can get a, a COVID test, um, obviously hoping for a negative outcome on that. They can go to their healthcare provider, and if they have a doctor's note that talks about, um, you know, these symptoms are not related to COVID, and you provide that doctor's note to your school, the child can return as long as they are symptom free. Or the third option is the quarantine uh, for 10 days, and then they would have um, also to be fever-free and symptom-free for 24 hours before returning to, to school. So those apply to any one of those class A symptoms. The class B symptoms on the right side of that column um, is things that you also might, might think are common with flu, common colds, and those types of things. So it includes fatigue, a headache, muscle or body aches, sore throat, congestion or runny nose, nausea or vomiting, or diarrhea. So class B symptoms work a little bit different than the class A as far as having your child return to school. If they have one class B symptom, then we simply ask that they stay home for 24 hours and wait till that, uh, that ailment has gone away and then they can return to school. If they have two or more of those or any one that lasts more than 24 hours, then the first protocol that I explained with the, the 10 days or getting a test or a doctor's note um, applies in those cases. 
So this may seem, again, a little bit overwhelming and a bit confusing, um, but we're here for you to answer questions that you might have about how this works. Um, our goal is to get as many kids as possible back to in-person learning. And by following these protocols that we've had in place since the beginning of the school year, as I mentioned earlier, we've had great success in preventing the spread of the COVID virus within our school system. Um, and very proud for everybody for doing that. So I'm gonna be around um, to on the chat and to answer questions for you, but please either take a picture of the screen or jot it down. And uh, I'm here as a resource uh, for you and all the staff at the, at the school as well. Um, so you can call me, my number is right there. It's 558-5407 and my email address, bazmus at cbsd.org. You can contact me either one of those ways and I am happy to address any concerns or answer the questions that you may have. So thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate that. And we look forward to having your third graders back in school with us. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'd like to talk a little bit about what our arrival process looks like and how we typically start our school day. Our school day begins at 930. We know a lot of families who are juggling multiple students and because of this, we're doing what we've been calling a soft start to our day, where students may arrive anywhere between 930 and 10 o'clock. We hope this helps families who are managing students who are both in person and are at home and virtually. Students are currently arriving in one of two ways, through our school valet or by our bus. Under guidance from Spokane Regional Health District, our buses are running at 50% capacity, so using our school valet is highly recommended. When students arrive at school each morning, our school staff collects student attestation forms and takes each student's temperature. Students whose temperature falls below 99.4 go directly from drop-off and are welcomed into their classrooms. If a student's temperature is between 99.4 and 100.3, a staff member will escort your student inside to a designated area where we then give students' bodies time to, time to regulate before we recheck their temperature. We know as the weather gets colder, you're sending your kids to school bundled up and they're getting out of warm cars. So we want to make sure we give their time, their bodies time to regulate before we recheck their temperature. If students arrive at school with a temperature of 100.4 or above, they'll be required to return home and a member of our office staff will follow up with your family for more guidance. If your student needs to be checked out of the school um, during the school days, our normal checkout procedures still apply. We will ask you to buzz into the office. You'll be required to wear a mask and you will come in to check out your student um, with our wonderful secretaries at our front desk. If your students will be returning to school after your appointment, you'll then check them back into the office and your student will be escorted back to class. As I interact with parents, one of the things that's making them the most nervous is their students wearing their masks. I have to say our students are doing an excellent job wearing their masks as well as keeping six feet apart and having and have already fallen into the routine of hand washing and sanitizing when required to do so. If students are struggling with this, just like any other behavior or task, we're modeling for them and teaching to the expectation. I'll now turn it over to Mr. Krentel to talk a little bit more about our expectations of your students during the school day. Thank you, Mrs. Karras. The middle of the day for our third graders represents a time to refuel. After a morning of learning, the teachers are watching the children for their needs for brain breaks, movement breaks, and some nourishment so they can get back at it. Lunch will be held in our classrooms for now. And for those students that bring their own lunch, they will just be reaching into their backpack, into their backpack or a nearby space to grab their lunch, as we will not be using our cubbies to store any of our personal gear this year. Students who would like to have a school lunch will have it delivered right to the classroom door. Masks, of course, are taken off during this time of the day, but the children are required to put them back on if they need to move around the classroom for any reason. Parents, as you're considering what you might include in your child's lunch or snack, you may need to be aware of food allergies in your child's classroom. Your classroom teacher will be notifying you of that if it is the case. Children are encouraged to bring a healthy snack from home, and in most cases, if a family wants to provide an individually wrapped snack to share with the class, that would be acceptable. Please be sure to check with your school's 
teacher or principal if you have any questions about this so you can know what the most up-to-date expectations are. Midday also holds another student soon to be favorite, the outdoor movement break. This time is a cohorted break on the playground where the students can again take off their masks. What this means is the classroom group of students or a cohort will take turns using playground zones for their breaks. While one cohort of students uses the big toy, another may be using the field as an example of how the zones and the cohorts work. Masks will be worn to and from this outdoor movement break and the kids will use a one-way path through the school to get to and from the playground whenever possible so to avoid groups of children passing each other in the hallways. Parents, you are our biggest partners in the education of your children, and we want to do everything that we can to continue that productive partnership. Having said that, this year, in order to maintain the safest possible learning environment, we will not be able to have classroom volunteers. We will still have school volunteers, and I would encourage you to contact your building's principal to discuss your options for how you can still volunteer within the school. Your presence would be welcomed, but the ways that you could help would be limited to the areas outside of the classroom. At this point, I will turn it over to Mrs. Kent for description of the rest of the day. Well, thank you, Mr. Krentel. Good evening, third grade parents. So as you've been hearing, many of our school procedures have changed from what our third grade students remember doing when they were second graders. And for that reason, our teachers will spend a lot of time, especially in the first few days of school, teaching students new routines and expectations that really focus on their safety. So for example, when students need to use the restroom, they're now only sent one student at a time to a designated grade level restroom. They're asked to sign in and out of the classroom. So we know when students are outside of their classroom cohort and they're taught to be sure to wash their hands thoroughly. Teachers will also spend time teaching to appropriate mask wearing. We ask that students keep their masks covering both their nose and mouth at all times when they're learning in the classroom. A cloth mask that fits securely over their ears is the recommended style because that provides the best protection and we've noticed with our little kids, it doesn't slip off their nose easily. Masks are preferred to the net gaiter and are required by our Department of Health. Students may also wear a face shield with a mask underneath. Some parents have questions about their students with medical conditions. If you believe your child has a medical condition that prevents mask wearing, please contact your building principal and we'll help you explore options to keep both your student and all of our other students safe. As our day comes to a close um, and students pack up to go home, we want to let you know that we do offer each student a breakfast to take home for the next morning. If you want your child to have a school provided breakfast each day, please encourage them to take one as they're getting packed up to go home. And finally, um, at the end of our school day, typically around 245, we begin our dismissal process. Each school's process works a little bit different. However, you can expect your school to communicate with you their specific pickup times and process. Students are dismissed through a rolling dismissal system to ensure social distancing and typically takes time, typically takes place between the times of 2.45 and 3.10. As you arrive in our parent valet to pick up your child, we notify your child of your arrival and they will be escorted to your car. Please know that this dismissal process does take a little longer than what you've experienced in the past, and your patience and cooperation is greatly appreciated by all of us. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Teske, who will be talking to us a little bit about our approach shifting from virtual to in-person learning. Thank you, Mrs. Kent. As you have heard throughout our webinar tonight, our third grade students come into school knowing many routines and procedures. In essence, they already know how to do school. Our normal school procedures will look a little bit different for our third graders as they venture back. And although our students have been engaged in online learning since last spring, it may take some time to adjust to being back in the building and classroom setting full time. 
It will take some time for our students to build up their stamina for school and to get into the routine of our new learning procedures. Our teachers and staff do a wonderful job at teaching to these expectations in a kind and caring way. Just like our kindergartners, first and second graders, we have no doubt that our third graders will adapt and do an outstanding job. Also, it may be hard for your child to leave you. Your child has been with you and or grandparent and caregivers for nearly eight months. They might shed a couple of tears and be a little sad. The best thing we can do as parents is to listen, love and encourage our children. We need to acknowledge their feelings and at the same time be positive and continue to help them navigate this unique school year. CVSD schools truly are a wonderful place to be. On behalf of our elementary school principal group, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. We look forward to seeing our third grade students next week. Wonderful. This is the point in the webinar where we're going to move to the Q&A section. We've been getting lots of great questions during the presentation. I just want to remind folks who have joined us that you can use that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and type us a question and we can see those. Uh, we've been, we have a team who've been answering some live and then I'm going to walk through and ask our panelists to answer some of the themes that we're seeing here. We would ask you to include the name of your school in your question as uh, some information differs by school and that will help us better answer your inquiry. So with that, I will um, ask the first question. We've been getting uh, some about transportation. And I'm wondering if one of our panelists could address whether kids can walk to school and how that will work. I'm happy to take that one. Um, and I've been trying to answer some of those questions in the chat as we've been going along. Um, so let's hope for consistency. Um, Although we're asking our families to use our car, their cars and drop off through the valet and the buses, we do realize that some family situations are unique and that's a, a special time for families. In those situations, we just ask you to reach out to the principal, talk to the school principal and they can walk you through the procedure at the school so that you're, um, when you walk your child to school, you um, have the attestation ticket ready to go, where to go at that drop off spot at the school. Um, and just a reminder to all our families, um, we're walking, uh, parents also will need to wear a mask when they come to school grounds and we'll need to ensure that we have social distancing with our families um, as they walk into schools. Great, thank you. We also have a transportation question about pickup and a parent wondering about picking up multiple students in different grades. Could someone address uh, the way that that will work? Sure, I could jump in on that. Um, each school is doing handling that a little bit differently. Uh, my school is Broadway and we are having the families um, pick up with the youngest um, student. Um, so that's, that's how we're handling it at, at Broadway. We'll have all the kids go um, when the youngest student in the family gets picked up. Terrific. And last transportation question I'm seeing is about buses. Could someone reiterate what's happening with buses? So our buses will be running at 50% capacity um, because we have to continue to do contact tracing and social distancing on our buses. We will also be uh, running our buses with windows down for extra ventilation. And so in the, in the months where we get into the colder weather, we certainly want your children to bundle up. We do encourage you to, to use the bus if uh, that is the, the best way to, to get your child to school. But we are making sure that our buses are at 50% capacity and that there is a social distance, physical distance between students. So you're gonna see one, one child per seat unless they're from the same family and then they can sit together. But we don't, what we don't want to have happen is a, an entire class quarantined or an, a student quarantined because they were sitting too closely on the bus. And we wanna make sure that that is done as safely as possible. Terrific. We've also got some questions about ABLES. So I'd love to invite a panelist to speak to um, what will the day look like for ABLES? Uh, will they be in person or online? Can, can someone just review uh, what will be happening for those kiddos? I'll be happy to take that. Good evening, families, and welcome to tonight. 
Um, our ABLES program for the 2020 and 21 school year is an online program. And really the reason for that um, is that as we are trying to keep strict cohorting of our students and keeping them um, safe, uh, by bringing students from multiple schools, we really break up that cohorting. So we will continue to operate ABLES online. Uh, families will have the option. There will be a communication that comes out from um, our coordinator of ABLES uh, at the beginning of next week. But families will have the option to be able to access their ABLES online at school, or they could have the option to stay at home and access it. So if you're a Tuesday ABLES student, you could stay at home, access your online learning, or come to school, and that will be a family option for you but it will not be in person. Terrific. We also are getting some questions um, just to, for some clarification around masks. Um, there's a question about whether uh, kiddos can use half face shields. And if, if they're sitting six feet away in a classroom, if they can take off their mask, could someone just clarify um, the mask protocol for us? So masks in our classrooms, whether you're six feet away or not, uh, need to be continually worn unless you're in a snack break or a lunch break. Um, uh, but it doesn't, the six foot of distance does not mean that we can take our masks off. You have to have, um, you can't have a half sheet shield and it has to have a drape if it is, if you're going to use a shield. Um, and we can talk through what that drape would look like. The real, um, the real issue is trying to contain any of the um, respiratory droplets that are uh, normally spread without a mask on. And so if you have those specific questions regarding which ones will work, um, please let us know and we'll walk you through that. But our requirement is that even though you're six feet away, you still have to wear your mask unless you're eating lunch and or are having a snack time. Terrific. Also have some questions about symptoms. So this would be um, great for someone to, to jump in and just review a little bit. We've got some questions about, you know, if my kiddo has, a, has the common cold, uh, do they still need to quarantine for 10 days or do they need to get a test? And for, for folks who are isolating or, or um, staying home for the 10 days, can they do school virtually? That is a great question and one that um, has certainly come up in all of our buildings already so far. Um, it's tricky this time of year. We know that um, kids and adults all start to get the sniffles or have a scratchy throat, um, but we are keeping the health and safety of our students as our utmost priority. So as um, Mr. Osmus explained earlier, we have that level A and level B symptom list that we are all abiding by. Um, so although those real common childhood ailments um, might just seem like the common cold. We are enacting those protocols in each of our buildings. So what we would ask is that if you have allergies or just the sniffles, um, we know that many of the clinicians in the area are seeing patients um, virtually or in person. A doctor's note that confirms that their illness is something other than COVID allows a student to come back to school quickly. Um, if you choose to have your child tested, a negative result and symptom free allows them to come back to school. Um, or you can just opt to keep your child at home um, and be on the safe side for 10 days and make sure that they're feeling well before they return. If a student does stay home for a period of time, then the virtual learning options that we've had in place since the start of the school year would be in effect and you can work with your child's teacher um, to determine how best to make that virtual learning um, accessible to them if you choose to have them stay at home for a period of time. Thank you. Uh, we have a, a question about kind of um, the big picture decision about being um, in person versus being virtually and how will the district be looking, what metrics will the district be using to decide if you need to go all virtual again? I certainly will take that. One of the things that, um, as we know, we've, uh, in a lot of our communications, we've talked about how we've been working specifically with Dr. Lutz and the team at the regional health department. We understand that the situation with the health department and the uh, employment status of uh, Dr. Lutz has caused some people to question 
Um, have we been consulting uh, Dr. Lutz prior to the decision to come back for a third grade? And if we haven't, then who have we been consulting? And so I'll just walk down a, a bit of a timeline that. I had a meeting with Dr. Lutz on October 27th. Um, and in, at that meeting, we discussed, um, he and a colleague of mine in, in another district discussed our plans and what we were doing with moving our second graders back in. And at that time, he said, absolutely support second grade moving back in. And we also talked about third grade moving back to in-person learning. And he uh, added his support for third grade moving back into in-person learning on October 27th. And then we had a board meeting because our board had approved us to come back to in-person learning from K-2. And our board then approved a uh, third grade coming back on October 30th. And well, in between there, there was some a little bit of disruption at the regional health department. We've had a great working relationship with Dr. Lutz and we will continue to have a working relationship with our um, folks and our team at the regional health department. We work very closely with Mark Springer. We worked closely with Mark Springer, who's an epidemiologist. He's the lead epidemiologist at the health department. We worked closely with him back in uh, March as we made multiple decisions regarding school when the pandemic first started. And he has been very, very valuable to us along with Dr. Lutz and the team. Uh, we will continue to work with uh, the health officer as we move uh, forward. So that's the first thing. Second thing, one of the things that we're really looking at and is very, very vital is in talking with our health officers and our folks at the regional health department. What we are not seeing in our schools is spread of the virus in our schools. We have had one, um, one spread of the virus. Uh, somebody caught the virus from somebody else as actually adults. Um, in our schools. That's the first um, example of spread. I've also talked to, and we talked to other school districts in the region who are phasing their children back into schools. And we know that the spread of the virus is very limited in our schools right now. And it's limited because of all of the safety protocols that Mr. Asmus talked about. Mask wearing, screening, uh, symptom screening, uh, six feet social distancing with our lower class size. We have increased our ventilation in our classrooms and have higher filtration systems. And so all of those things in, in, in conjunction with one another and layered on top of one another are showing and proving that our schools are very safe as, they, as our students return to in-person learning. And so we're not seeing the spread of, it, of the virus. We have had a case, we've had four cases of students um, bringing the virus into our schools, but it hasn't spread from there. And so we're very, very confident that we can continue maintaining that safe environment. One of the things that we are looking at very, very closely is any spread of the virus within our schools. And as we monitor that, we are communicating and would be communicating with our health department. If that starts to happen, then it would cause us to really rethink whether or not we could be open for, um, for our students to be in person. Long explanation, um, um, but I appreciate the question. Super. I also have a, a question about families being able to move um, kiddos who have come back in person. If they decide they'd like to go back all virtual, can, can you speak to that? Is that a possibility? I can speak to that. I've had several phone calls recently around those conversations. And what I would encourage you to do is to call your school principal and explain your unique situation and we will work with you and to do our best to, to meet the needs of your family. Um, so just pick up the phone and give us a call. Okay, the next theme is about food. If someone could address some questions about whether families should be loading money onto lunch accounts or if lunches are still free, how's that working? Well, I can, can certainly oh, go ahead, Mr. Hoagland. We'd rather have it here from our principals. <laughs> so um, we are lucky enough to be able to um, serve students for free of charge. And so kids can still bring in their own cold lunch if they would like. But we have lunch that also will be served to them uh, each day. And then they also have the opportunity to, before they leave school uh, every day, to take home the following morning's breakfast. So it's a to-go bag and they take that home with them and 
Hopefully don't eat it as a snack that day because it's meant for breakfast the next morning. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. I've got a couple questions about technology. There's a question about whether students need to bring their Chromebooks back and forth between home and school. Well, I got to answer this for second grade parents, so I might as well answer it once again. Yes, please. If you would send your child's charged Chromebook along with their charging cord, either in a drawstring bag or in their backpack to school every day, um, technology has always been a part of our elementary school day to some extent, and it will continue to be so. So if you would send that Chromebook with your student, it will be sent home each day as well. So that way in the event that your child would need to be at home learning for any reason, they would still have access to their online learning from home. So please send it back and forth um, in that backpack ready to use at school each day. And a question about supplies. One is, will you be sending um, symptom attestation tablets home and how does that work? And a question about school supplies and do kids need to be bringing school supplies? You will be provided with a um, attestation pad. It looks like this and you can find it in, um, you'll be picking up um, these forms at your school. So look from, for communication from your principals on that. As far as supplies, please um, be patient and wait for communication from your individual teachers as it will vary from school to school um, based on what supplies we'd like for you to keep at home and what supplies we'd like um, to come back to the school building. Okay, I've also got a theme of questions here about breaks and the vacation schedule. So I'm gonna wrap these together. If someone could address how many recesses there are during the school day and if kids are able to play with kids outside from other classes. And then the second part is, is there any change to Thanksgiving and um, holiday breaks? I can, uh, I can help a little with the, uh, the recess schedule. Um, we're all scheduling two recesses a day, one associated with lunch and one associated uh, morning or afternoon that's a little more full for the kids to give them an outdoor mask-free break. Uh, we are cohorting kids and keeping them together in, uh, within their class to help um, make sure that we're not uh, sharing any, uh, any germs and things like that. Um, to my knowledge, uh, Thanksgiving break and um, and the uh, Christmas break are, are all just the same. And uh, I think there's a new calendar coming out if it's not already out. I'll just add to that one real fast. The updated school calendar is on our website and is able for all our families to find it. And just as an added piece for the Thanksgiving break, since that's really close to us, on the Wednesday, uh, November 25th. That is an early release day for all of our students and staff at 12.30 p.m. Um, so we might as well let everybody know that right now. Thank you. Uh, we also have a question about other grades coming back in person. And could someone from the team address kind of that forward look for additional grades coming back? And we did get a question about middle school and high school in that regard as well. Where we're currently at right now is at our last board meeting, I gave a report and set some target dates where we would like to see our fourth and fifth grade students and sixth grade students uh, return to in-person learning. Those target dates at this point in time are fourth grade on November 30th and then fifth and sixth grade on December 7th. We are currently working again very, very closely with our health officer and the regional health department to see when it is most um, appropriate for us to start phasing back um, students beyond the sixth grade level. And of course, we'll be looking at the working with them also on our fourth and fifth and sixth grade transitions moving forward. Again, I think everyone, uh, every one of us on this uh, webinar tonight um, wants and knows that the best way for us to reach our kids is in person. The best way for teachers to connect, connect is in person. And that isn't any different from elementary school all the way through to high school. And so we are working diligently, following their guidance, following and with their support to get as many of our children transitioned back to in-person learning as soon as possible. Uh, 
Uh, we're also getting a few questions about conferences and what families can expect um, to, to um, see about conferences. So I can answer that. At the beginning of the school year, we had our parent meetings and therefore that was in lieu of our conference for this fall and then again in the spring. And that will be noted on the new district calendar. So you'll see that. Our teachers will be sending out a narrative report that will be going home on November 23rd so that your, um, the, your child's teacher is going to be communicating all of the learning that they've done thus far this fall and also setting some goals for learning for the remainder of um, the next trimester. Excellent. Well, we have um, hit the majority of our big themes and I know our team's been busy answering um, specific questions live. I would um, wanna thank everybody for your great questions during this webinar and also mention to you, if you didn't get a specific question answered or something occurs to you, please reach out to your principal at your school. Everyone's nodding their heads. This team is here for you. They're ready to answer your questions and we'd really encourage you to reach out and don't hesitate to do that. And um, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Tim Newtonboom, who's gonna close us out tonight. Thank you, Michelle. Um, thank you all for being with us tonight. This is certainly a tricky and unprecedented time uh, in your child's education. I hope that you can feel tonight as you look around uh, your screen at a bunch of dedicated uh, leaders in our district that have been planning for months for this day and not only have we been planning for months, we have been able to really do it successfully with our early learning, our kindergarten, our first grade, and our second grade. And I have to tell you, while we planned for months, we had our greatest worries, and we have not set on our laurels with that. We continue to modify, we continue to teach, we continue to welcome our students. And while it might look different as students come back to our school, um, one of the things that has been just true and true at every grade level that has returned is the smiles and the eyes on kids' faces um, as they return to be back with and amongst their peers and with their teachers and their principals in person has been so heartwarming. And please know, I hope you feel tonight, the care and safety and attention that is provided for your child. So with that, we will close our evening. Thank you for joining us and have a great night. Thanks, everyone.